Hello, I'm David Mead, the Education and Training Manager at CIHT. And I am John Parkin, a Fellow of the Chartered Institution of Highways and Transportation. I'm Professor of Transport Engineering at the University of the West of England, Bristol. I chair the panel within CIHT that oversees non-standard qualification applications via the individual route. We are going to discuss the procedures for applying for CENG and IENG via a non-standard route. The first question is, what is the standard route? All professional qualifications require both academic knowledge and an assessment of professional competence. The Engineering Council, the registration body for the engineering profession, has set academic benchmarks for the profession. For an incorporated engineer, the benchmark is an accredited Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Engineering, a BSc or BEng. For a chartered engineer, it's an accredited Master of Engineering degree, an MEng, or a BEng plus an accredited Master of Science degree, an MSc. So the next question is, what is a non-standard route? Many people work as engineers, but do not have the full academic qualifications to become either incorporated or chartered. Of course, it will be possible to pursue further academic studies, such as a master's programme. However, this may not always be practical or desirable. An alternative, or often so-called non-standard route, is to submit a technical report to demonstrate experience which provides for the difference between the academic level achieved and the academic level required. The first step for everyone to take is to determine which route you need to follow. Therefore, please go to the initial assessment page on CIHT's website, where you will need to upload your CV and educational documents. We will then get back to you and confirm your route. It is vital that everyone does this. It is free, open to members and non-members, and does not mean you are committing yourself to this route or applying within a set time period. You should also note that to apply for professional qualifications with CIHT, you must first become a member. For more information on this, please see CIHT's membership page on our website. The first stage of the process to apply via the technical report option is the submission of a synopsis. The synopsis is a 500 word summary, about a side of A4, which specifies the structure and content of the proposed technical report. The synopsis can be submitted at any time of the year. Once submitted, the synopsis is reviewed by two members of the panel. Section 7 of CIHT's guidance notes provides clear guidance on the requirements for the report. To demonstrate the educational base for becoming a chartered engineer, candidates need to have the equivalent underpinning knowledge and understanding of engineering principles as those of a master's graduate. For an incorporated engineer, the level is that of a bachelor's degree. It's really important that applicants think carefully and deeply about the way they have applied engineering principles and this can be across a range of projects that they've been involved with both large and small. If the synopsis is found to be acceptable applicants then have one year to submit their full 8,000 word report. The deadlines for the reports as well as the fees can be found on the CHT website. Once again two experienced and trained assessors will consider the 8,000 word technical report. Normally, one assessor will be an academic and the other a practitioner who works in the highways and transportation industry. If the report is found to be acceptable, applicants will be invited to attend an interview. Candidates sometimes refer to the technical report as a project report, but that's not the case, is it? Candidates are allowed to use examples of their knowledge from a range of projects, aren't they? Yes, indeed. This is a very important point. Applicants need to remember that the focus of the report is to identify those parts of their engineering experience that demonstrate that they have effectively closed the educational gap between the highest qualification level and the required qualification level 
for the grade of registration that they are applying for. Section 7 of the guidance summarises this in two parts. Part A talks about using a combination of general and specialist engineering knowledge and understanding to optimise the application of existing and emerging technology. And Part B talks about applying appropriate theoretical and practical knowledge to the analysis and solution of engineering problems. Section 7 provides more detail. In addition to a good knowledge of CIHT's guidance, applicants should familiarise themselves with the Engineering Council's UK spec document. This can be quite challenging to do. It's worth having good conversations with your mentor and other colleagues who are chartered or incorporated. We can also provide advice directly to candidates as well. What else should candidates consider when compiling the report? Candidates should probably be aware what isn't required. We often see submissions where issues such as line management, contract negotiations, client relationships and budgeting and so on are discussed. These are important aspects of an engineer's role, but we are not looking in depth at these skills at this point in the journey to becoming registered. So how should the report be laid out? Is there a template? Setting an appropriate structure for the report, based around the Engineering Council requirements, is the most important aspect of writing a successful report. Each report will be quite different depending on the particular experience of the applicant. For this reason, it's not possible to specify a one-size-fits-all template. At the synopsis stage, candidates should make clear, using bullet points, an index or a matrix, exactly how they propose to structure the report. Some applicants use the order in the UK spec as their template, and this is a good approach, but not the only approach. As well as the report, candidates need to submit their CV and records of continual professional development, or CPD. Why is this? And why are they important? Most reviewers will read the applicant's CV first. It allows them quickly to grasp the candidate's professional history. It's vital that the CV is fairly comprehensive. The CPD record helps reviewers understand, beyond the workplace, how applicants have gained the knowledge and understanding. CPD is also a professional requirement once registered with the Engineering Council. Applicants will be invited to interview if their report is acceptable. Interviews are 60 to 80 minutes long. Tell us more about the interview, John. The interview will be based on the submitted report and we will ask questions to probe more deeply into the applicant's knowledge and understanding based on what is presented. The ordering of the questioning will usually follow the order of the report. We appreciate that this process can be a, appear rather daunting. However, it is important to remember that the report is based on the applicant and what they know and can do. From feedback of previous applicants, the most difficult part is simply starting. What we suggest is that they note down some ideas, think about some of the areas they may want to address, and then talk to a mentor. Yes, a mentor is crucial. Ideally, a mentor will have experience of this route and will be able to give you sound advice. From an assessor's perspective, it is obvious when someone has been well mentored because they are so much better prepared. This is where CHT can help. If applicants would like help finding a suitable mentor, they should get in touch with the education team. We hope you found this helpful and we wish you every success in starting your application. Thank you for listening. Further information is available on the CHT website and from the education team.